Hello friends, how are you? My name is Ari Ferger and today I'm going to share with you my thoughts about the fifth season of the TV series Vikings. Only now have I started to watch the show and on the previous video I've already shared with you my thoughts about it and comparing the fictional characters with historical people, the historical events, the cultural mistakes, but also good aspects on the portrayal of medieval Scandinavia that the producers were careful enough to include. All in all, I had a very positive idea about the show, but this was before I started watching the fifth season, which completely changed my opinion about the show. So before we start, this video will contain spoilers, obviously, so if you don't want me to ruin the show for you, come back later. You have been warned, so let's get started. Alright, so before I start criticizing, I just want to tell you that even though there are clear mistakes on clothing, uh, weaponry, historical events and such, I think it's a good show because it makes people want to know more about the Vikings and research about it, but at the same time, in some aspects, we are still being fed with a typical wrong portrayal of the Vikings, which isn't good. Reinforcing the 19th century romanticized portrayal of the Vikings is just continue to give life to the wrong ideas we have about medieval Scandinavia and we can't seem to get away from it. Well, in the fourth season Ragnar Lothbrok died and now it seems the producers of the show are running out of material, so they are picking up the same theatrical inventions of Hollywood and what seemed to be a show that was finally helping to spread a more accurate portrayal of the Vikings, it's now completely running away from it and going back to the same rubbish. Let's start with Ivar the Boneless. The fifth season begins with Ragnar's sons invading England. Ivar the Boneless was in fact one of the main commanders of the Viking invasions in England until moving to Ireland and completely disappearing from the historical documentation. Poof, he's gone. And this kind of gap in history gives the producers of the show uh, freedom to explore the characters. Ivar is in a sort of crusade against Christians, he is portrayed as a religious fanatic and he has his own agenda, a personal delight in killing Christians and torturing them. Well, this doesn't make much sense, especially during the Viking Age. Vikings didn't want to spread their religion and they had nothing against other people's religions. In fact, they welcomed new religions in their culture. I've said this before, uh, there were as many Christian Vikings as there were pagans. Uh, there was a huge amount of Viking Age Scandinavians who were both at once. Adding yet another god into their pantheon was just beneficial. The religious conflicts in Viking Age Scandinavia existed, but they weren't about religion, they were about politics. The Vikings were not like Christians and Muslims wanting to spread their religion and making their holy war. Obviously there was a great amount of politics involved to increase power, but for both Christians and Muslims, religion was the main tool to gather followers and armies. Uh, it was the main initiative for people to join the cause and go fight against heathens and infidels. The Vikings did not use religion to motivate their warriors to go on raiding. What motivated Vikings was the loot, pillaging, adventure, trading, lands to farm, increasing property. Everything was highly political, not religious. So the portrayal of Haivar being a religious fanatic on a crusade against Christians is just silly. But mind that I'm talking about raiding, not war. War was another matter. When Scandinavians fought each other and against others, religion was most certainly used, especially when Scandinavian peoples absorbed religious traditions from Central European Germanic cultures. In the series, you can see Ivar motivating his warriors by shouting Valhalla. Valhalla was a later concept in the history of Scandinavia. And 
highly developed during the Viking Age to motivate warriors into suicidal advances towards their enemies, not fearing death because... Oh, Valhalla! One of the main events of the fifth season is the colonization of Iceland, orchestrated by Floki. The producers made a mess on this. <laughs> they have created a very wrong religious fiction out of an historical event that had nothing to do with religion. Floki reaches Iceland, he has visions, he hallucinates and he believes that he is in the land of the gods. Nothing wrong with that. I'm sure the first settlers felt that Iceland was a real magical place because the landscape is indeed out of the ordinary. But Floki wants to share the place with those who believe in the true gods. On this point, to the Vikings there were no true gods, there were just gods. They were aware of the Christian God, uh, the God of Islam, they were aware of Judaism, Hinduism, even Buddhism. They were very much aware of the Celtic gods because most of Scandinavian slaves were Celts and a lot of the Celtic culture was absorbed by Scandinavians. So there wasn't this idea of the Norse gods being the true gods because the Norse adopted everybody else's gods. And Floki wants to create a, a new community, a place for true believers, a working colony of believers in the true faith. And he's a sort of holy man, uh, a messiah, uh, taking the chosen ones to the promised land. This sounds a lot like a biblical story. The first Icelanders were Norwegian exiles, nobility escaping the new political and religious power of Norway, going to Iceland with their slaves so they could be free from political and religious persecution. But maybe the show is giving us the, this very religious portrayal because indeed it's from Icelanders that we got the majority of knowledge about Norse witchcraft and sorcery and mythology. Iceland really was the stage of so much sorcery. People sending and receiving curses, battles against sorcerers and black magicians, a bloody mess. There was even a part of Iceland which was notoriously known to be the birthplace of most sorcerers of black magic, the northwest part of Iceland. So maybe that's why the producers wanted to give this religious component to the colonization of Iceland. But one thing they got right, Floki's Icelandic community starts to lose control, the people are unsatisfied, riots occur, they start killing each other, and burning and destroying the community. Yeah, this aspect they got right. The history of Iceland was written with blood, so to speak. Just read the Icelandic sagas. Everyone has some grudge on a neighbor, blood feuds, lots of curses and sorcery involved, people killing their neighbor's cattle and killing each other. A lot of violence is involved in the history of Iceland. And well, speaking of Iceland, we see Floki's community building a temple to Thor, with rituals involved, etc. And throughout the fifth season, we see other ceremonies and rituals. Well, the, the ritualistic and religious scenes are somewhat theatrical and forced. They portray the priests as grotesque figures with weird clothes, faces painted, but we have no information about this aspect. Honestly, it's just silly, going back to the same romanticized ideas of the 19th century, portraying the Norse as barbaric, strange creatures, blood-sucking, mindless freaks. Speaking of religion, in the previous season we have the monk Hethelstein and now in the fifth season we have the Bishop Hadmund. Both symbolize the introduction of the Christian faith in medieval Scandinavia. But the conversion process of the Norse was not that catastrophic and drastic as many think. On the contrary, it was rather slow and tolerant. Bishop Hadmund is a complete Christian fanatic. His goal is to kill all heathens, uh, rid the world of pagans, a bloodthirsty Catholic with the same quest as Ivar the Boneless but wanting to wipe out all pagans. This aspect of Christianity and paganism is very complicated to talk about. Because it isn't that simple, it's not about hatred and imposing religions, making wars and spreading religious ideas. 
at this historical time of the series, the, the contact the Norse had with Christians was still rare and sporadic, often made by Vikings who traveled to the European continent. We have to understand that religion was never spread by war itself. People went to war uh, and in that cultic madness they didn't stop to ask, excuse me sir, have you ever heard of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? No? Then die! No, religion was spread in trading. Traders and merchants were the ones to spread religious ideas during, during, and during this time the Vikings did make trading but mostly it was among other Scandinavians and occasionally with other Europeans and they came in contact with Christianity like that at first. And as I've said before there were as many Viking Christians as there were Viking pagans and both at once. So before Christianity was forced there were already a lot of Christians in Scandinavia. And the series portray Bishop Hadmund almost as a member of the Inquisition. For instance, in Sweden during the 15th and the 16th centuries, there were inquisitorial proceedings against Odin's cults. But as you can see, the Viking Age had been long gone. Sweden was already entering the modern period of history. And with Iceland, it's the same story. Pagans and Christians uh, coexisting uh, in a relative peace, but both religious ideas gave birth to a very unique type of witchcraft, a mixture between the Christian and the pagan, well, until of course pr Protestantism was introduced in Iceland during the 16th century and then it was a bloody mess and a great persecution on pagans, uh, witch trials and such. The first to be converted were the Danes, uh, which then made a lot of political pressure to the Swedish and Norwegian kingdoms to do the same. But Catholicism was something for kings and nobles and great urban centers. In the interior and further north, especially in rural areas, it took many centuries before Christianity took root. In the previous seasons I was glad to see, for instance, uh, the foundation of the Duchy of Normandy by the character Rollo. This was turning away from the general idea people have of the Vikings as being the bloodthirsty brutes only interested in war. They were much more concerned with farming, having lands to farm, property, uh, trading and other activities. But here we go again to the same violence. Don't get me wrong, violence has always been part of history and the human condition, but this portrayal is wrong. This is a very serious wrong idea, because it's also reflected on religion. People have this wrong idea that war, violence, killing was an integral part of the Norse religion. Dying in battle, going to Valhalla, that's a wrong idea. Violence was not an important part in the old Scandinavian religion. The concept of Valhalla came much later, war gods came much later. In Scandinavia before and even during the first centuries of the Viking Age, fertility deities were much more important. Human sacrifices existed, of course, but they were not that common as we might, may think. There were followers of Odin, there were cults of Odin as a god of war and battle frenzy, but first adopted only by kings and nobles and in great urban centers. The majority of people worshipped fertility deities, sky deities, forest gods, um, gods of the sea and the mountains of the hunt, etc. But now, on the fifth season, we are going back to the same thing. Again, the same idea that the Nordic peoples were brutes who only knew how to make war. The series continued to go after barbarism. and. It tries to feed us with the 19th century romantic visions of the Vikings as wild warriors, the devils outside the Christian world. Finally, we have the representation of other cultures in the fifth season. Bjorn goes south into the Mediterranean. The Mediterranean wasn't something new to Nordic peoples. Uh, it was well known actually, but I'm not going to delve much on that aspect. But it, it's just a pity the fifth season only shows uh, a few minutes of the Mediterranean and mostly is actually spent on Northern Africa, in the desert. 
If the producers are running out of material, this would be a great opportunity to make fantastical adventures in the Mediterranean and they didn't even have to be fictional. But I would like to speak about that on another video someday about the Vikings in Portugal and Spain for instance. It's just crazy and filled with adventures and battles and even folklore concerning beautiful princesses. Still, the series have also introduced the Sami, finally, because the Sami were very much important in the religious structure of Scandinavia. Scandinavian spirituality has a lot of influences from the Sami, from shamanic practices. The god Thor, for instance, is a very Sami deity. But I was a bit sad to see that the Sami played a very insipid role in the fifth season. They show up as allies fighting alongside Lagertha and Bjorn against Ivar. Although in the field of battle, they are portrayed in a way that it made me judge the knowledge I have about the Sami. They looked like southern hemisphere jungle tribes of hunters, spitting darts and only fighting in the forest, hiding. Lagertha even says that her entire army must fight near a forest because that's where the Sami are most useful. That's their thing, fighting in the forest, hiding in bushes. I was honestly confused. The Sami are people of the mountains and the tundra. Uh, they are reindeer herders and they live in the open, rarely in the forest at all. They hunt in the open, they fish in the frozen seas, they have a very arctic type of life combined with pastoralism. If they wanted to put warriors that fight in the forest, maybe they should have chosen Finns. Those were natural forest dwellers and swamps and lakes very used to hunt with bow and arrow in the forest. I don't know, at this point I was just confused. Alright, after criticizing the fifth season of the TV series Vikings, I absolutely recommend you to watch it anyway, because it's cool and it's always fun to watch people being brutally murdered and hacking each other to pieces while you are wrapped in a blanket with your loved one. Quite romantic. So thank you so much for watching, well see you on the next video and as always, talk for the law.